trust me. When it comes to Montreal Canadian stuff that's in the news that we can talk about, this is one of the more undesirable topics. But because it was said in the media and because it's said by Elliot Friedman, I think it's got some sort of value to bring up. Not saying that this is going to happen, of course not. That's never what I'm saying with any of these hypothetical trade rumor style videos. But the fact is, it's been discussed, and because it's been discussed by people whose opinions and insight I value, I think it's fair to bring it up on the YouTube channel as a discussion-based commentary. So today, we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, the Pittsburgh Penguins, and no, we're not talking about that play-in series. We've already spoken a ton about that play-in series, and some hypothetical trades that could go down, depending on Elliot Friedman's own perspective and what he believes these teams could actually go for. This all comes off of the most recent 31 Thoughts podcast episode. I'll leave a link in the description to the episode. You can go check it out. It's... Come on, it's a 31 Thoughts podcast. You know what it's about. It's Jeff Merrick and Elliot Friedman spitting about NHL stuff. And a whole bunch of interesting discussion goes on, mostly in all of these episodes over here. We're going over to NHL Watcher's Twitter account. I've brought this Twitter user up several times throughout the past few months because what he does on Twitter is he listens to the radio, he listens to the podcast, he listens to the analysts talk their talk, and he transcribes all the juicy information and puts it into a tweet that I can screenshot and show you here on the video so you have some visual representation of what we're talking about. He spoke about what Elliot Friedman was talking about on the 31 Thoughts podcast. Friedman said this about Max Domi. Here's an early bet as to who could be a Pittsburgh Penguin next year. It's Domi. Afterwards, Jeff Merrick mentioned how the Domi family and the Lemieux family are close. It kind of lines up. It makes sense. He would not be surprised by that at all. Again, this is not a trade rumor video saying, oh, the Habs are going to trade Domi to the Penguins. It's just one person sharing his opinion, and the person who's sharing that opinion is somebody whose opinions in general I personally value. We also have Elliot Friedman saying this. This is a paraphrase of the actual quote, but Friedman does not believe that Crosby, Malkin, and Latang are going anywhere. But if he were the Leafs, he would make a call about Latang. Now that in itself is a video idea by itself. Man, that's a crazy idea. Latang to the Leafs? Huh, oh, come on. You never know. And if he were Montreal, he would call about Evgeny Malkin. Maybe you can change his mind. Put an offer out there that makes Rutherford think about it. Now, this is the main idea. Max Domi going over to the Penguins because there's a connection there, because there's questionable ideas as to whether or not Domi is valued in Montreal. And the separate idea we're talking about is Malkin, and if the Habs have it in them to ask for a Malkin, let's just say value statement, in understanding what exactly an Evgeny Malkin would cost, and seeing if they could try to give an offer that does cost that. Obviously, they're two separate ideas, but hey, we're talking about them here in the same video because they involve the same two teams. I wanted to talk a little bit first about the Domi one, and it's kind of weird talking about Domi trade rumors, especially at this time of the year, because Domi just came off of playing in the top six for the Canadiens in game two against Philly. The guy had three assists. Man, he's been getting on the score sheet, and it's honestly really refreshing to see Domi get back up there. After a year where he scored 70 points, where he wasn't all too great afterwards, he wasn't as consistent, and he wasn't as productive as he was, it's nice seeing him start to put the points up together and actually start producing in the playoffs, especially against the number one seeded Philadelphia Flyers. Now, I will say, the whole Domi on the fourth line thing is kind of overblown in my opinion, because Claude Julien, when he was here, he did mention that it's not really a fourth line, quote-unquote, that Domi is on. It's just a line made for the purposes of matching up against other teams' good lines, and they don't want to label the fourth line as the fourth line because the fourth line kind of has a stigma around it that makes it seem like these players aren't good enough to be somewhere above the fourth line. But the way Julian talked about it, he spoke about Domi as a guy who is only on the line that happens to be the fourth line out of necessity of the matchups, not because Domi is per se a fourth line player. But just because he said that does not mean that people are not 
dissecting Domi as if he was a fourth line player. This was a thread brought up on TSN 690 earlier in the week. We're going over to the RHAB subreddit to read what Darren Drager said about Max Domi. Star asked Darren Drager if he can explain why it appears Domi has been buried on the fourth line, quote unquote. Darren Dreger doesn't know what's for sure if the coaching staff even knows what Max's role with the team will be like in the future. Dreger doesn't think Bergevin or Julien would hold back Domi if they thought it would hurt the team. They must not be seeing something they want from Domi for him to not have been moved up in the lineup. And again, we already discussed the perspective arguing that it's not a fourth line rule per se, it's just the line that happens to go out fourth in the warmups. But I guess, going back to the original topic that Friedman and Merrick do have somewhat of a point, that the connections with the Domi family to the Lemieux family could serve as a very interesting bridge that would connect Domi to the Penguins. Furthermore, if the Penguins wanted a guy like Domi, they've gotten themselves four games worth of experience to see what he's actually about and understand the impact he can have on a fourth line. If they see potential in this kind of guy and they say, darn, this kind of guy, if you play him in the top six with Pittsburgh, this guy can light up the moon. I can understand why they would want to go after Domi in a potential trade, especially since, you know, he's an RFA, there's uncertainty as to whether or not he's going to come back. Him being an RFA could potentially make his value a little bit less on the trade market because you're not trading for the player and a contract, you're playing for the rights to sign that player to a contract. In fact, it'd be really cool if Montreal traded away Domi, then they signed him to an offer sheet and he came back. That'd be pretty interesting, but obviously there's a lot of loopholes that could be exploited in a process like that. As for Evgeny Malkin, this kind of relates to the idea that people have been asking me to talk about. I know Al, big contributor to the channel and frequent viewer on our live streams, you should check out our live streams that we do for the Habs games and some other hockey games every few days, if you haven't already. He has been asking me to make a Habs blow it up video, whether or not it's time to trade Malkin, trade Sid, trade Latang, trade all those guys, because, hey man, you guys just lost, what was it, like, your eighth playoff game out of nine, something really weird like that? It was some crazy statistic, I don't know what it was off the top of my head, but... The perspective that Friedman brings up is definitely interesting. He doesn't believe that Crosby, Malkin, Latang will be traded, but if he were other teams, he would call and at least ask about what those players would cost. As for an Evgeny Malkin, a guy who's one of the best centers in the league, hands down, one of the best players, probably a top 100 player of all time, I would probably say that myself. To me, if you want to trade for this guy, you got to give up a few assets. First and foremost, one very good roster player, one of your best prospects, and at least, I'd say, a first round pick and a second. Like, to me, if I'm the Penguins GM and the Canadians are asking me for a price on Malkin, I'm asking for Caulfield, Suzuki, a first and a second, maybe even a little bit more than that. Heck, you could even throw in a Max Domi and you could debate whether or not that's still fair. Obviously, players that are of this caliber of superstardom, it's difficult to make quantifiable trade requests that go one for one, or one for two, or one for three in a pick. It's difficult, especially for franchise-defining talents like Evgeny Malkin. But because the Penguins are in such a vulnerable spot, there is value, at least in my opinion, of asking the question. So, that's kind of why I wanted to make this video here today. Do I personally believe that Bergevin is going to go out there and make a Malkin trade? Probably not. But if you ask me, would he ask? I'd probably say yeah, knowing Mark Bergevin, that guy's always over there asking, calling around the phone, seeing what's on the market, and seeing what things cost. So, discussions on the phone about Malkin? Probably, but an actual trade that's close to happening? I don't really think so. As for Max Domi, we know the rumors have been circling around for the past year on whether or not he would actually be traded or sign an offer sheet or something like that. These talks got even amplified more once Domi stopped producing in the regular season compared to how he produced last year. But at the end of the day, this guy's producing three points in a single game against the Philadelphia Flyers, and that to me is very valuable at the moment. So. I don't know what's going to go on with Domi in the future, but all I do know is that right now, at this very moment, I'm sitting back and I'm enjoying what Max Domi is doing for the Habs against the Philadelphia Flyers and Carter Hart. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about this idea. Do you think Domi going to the Penguins would be a valuable piece of acquisitions for both teams? 
And what do you think about Malkin and whether or not the Canadians could, would, or should ask about him? Talk to me what you think in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. This is Rajasthan 99, and bye. <laughs>